Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, today it's going to be about uh, King Charles the third and didn't his Easter message uh, mention some sort of inclusivity and in family and what about his family and Harry what kind of example is that so we're gonna do some kind of reading on that and I want to finish up with uh, Donald Trump selling Bibles so I hope you like the video if you like the video please do like the video and if you haven't subscribed you know please subscribe and thank you very much for watching Yeah, so we're just going to jump right into it. And I want to know, you know, King Charles, what is the deal with a message of, uh, you know, inclusivity, but he's not showing it with his own family? Or are they behind the scenes um, patching things up and we don't know? And I don't know. So I want to know why. How is it he felt like he could preach a message like that without letting everyone know how he's cleaning up his own family? So is he? Is there something going on behind the scenes where Charles and Harry are patching things up somehow? I don't know. And uh, did he not feel some sort of, I don't know, tension, uh, understanding what he's telling people to do and he's not doing it himself then? We talk about Donald Trump and selling Bibles. It's the same thing. I want to know where is the conscience? You know, I, I, before we do too much more, let's just go ahead and uh, have a moment of meditation so I can get my head around this. So first off the bat, King Charles III. Um, is there in his, personally, does he feel some um, confusion or, or uh, there's a word that I'm looking for that's not coming to my head, but does he feel some, uh, you know, contradiction uh, there? Is uh, what is going on in his mind? I'm going to do six cards just to kind of get an idea of where uh, the king is with his thoughts of so six cards one two three four five and that's with the idea about patching things up with his own family so let's see although the royal family does have a history of just lopping people off and that's the end of it the signifier card for king charles in regard to his personal feelings behind the situation with his family and what he's preaching to the public. The signifier card, the Eight of Cups. So cups are emotion. This is a lot of emotion, and this is turning your back on all of that and heading off in another direction. So is that, is he possible of compartmentalizing things so that he can just turn his back on that, his second son, and continue on? Knowing that he's at the end of his life. The challenge to that is the Empress. Interesting. So the Empress is about secrets, but also about kind of a, a nurturing uh, atmosphere. So the challenge, well, yeah. So he, this is him personally turning his back on those emotions. And you can see that this is a, a young person, immature. So yeah, so this is a selfish, you could kind of think person turning his back on a secret. Look at the on his uh, emotions. Look, the secrets are right here, right over his, behind his hat. He's not looking at it. And then, um, and it's challenged by um, nurturing, and and the reveal of those secrets. Interesting. The the basis of the whole thing for Charles in regards to this conflict of of, of emotions 
and messaging is the Six of Wands. Well, the Six of Wands is victory. That's the basis. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And the Six of Wands, and I have to say, this person is looking particularly uh, regal in this picture. So the basis of all of this is that he, I guess, believes, and perhaps he's right, that victory is what he has to show everyone, okay? There's a, there's a front that has to go that. It's interesting that on his innermost uh, thoughts, we see this young, immature person turning his back on emotions with secrets over the shoulder. And then here, as far as the basis of everything, is that he has to be this very regal uh, public persona. In the past of this, uh, the past of this with the Nine of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, and the Nine of Swords is just a nightmare. And that, but that's in the past. So I think he's having to say, let's, let's separate all of this, even my current illness, the situation with Catherine, let's, it's in the past and we're moving forward. We're moving forward from everything else. Uh, the sky of this is uh, the magician. So the magician is the person, and look how smug this magician looks and the wise owl overseeing everything that's going on. And the thing about the magician is they have everything at their disposal to make their will you know, to make a thing come true. He's got cups, he's got uh, money, he's got uh, swords, he's got the wands, you know, he's got everything and they know how to use it. He's even got a book, books or several books of knowledge. And you know, I'm just noticing, I'm going to have to get my magnifying out later and my magnifying glass out later and look at this. There are names on the pages of these books. I've got to look those up and see what they actually say. The detail in these cards is many, you know, the, and I'll tell you at the end of the reading what the, a lot of, more about these cards, but you know, they're made up of pieces of art uh, cut and paste together in an amazing way. So, uh, and this is Cat Black, an Australian uh, artist, uh, digital um, graphics. But anyway, so the sky of this is that, yeah, he has got everything that he needs to to make this magically happen because he is the monarch. And if, either he has that or he feels he has that or both. But then the final outcome for this with, with King Charles, doesn't he feel a conflict? It looks like, no, he's got a complete separation of who he is personally and who he is uh, for everyone else. And the final outcome is this Knight of Wands. Is the, the Knight is the fighter of the royal court. Wands are actions. And so he is, in his mind, the Knight, the fighter of these actions, the one who will bring those actions forward as has been his, it's his job. So I think he has a complete separation almost to uh, a ridiculous, that, that maybe his subjects don't, recognize the conflict that's going as long as he presents this 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 message then his personal life and you have to think about that with with everything with diana maybe that's just the way he lives his life there's one side of him that's personal and he thinks nobody knows about or and that he can keep personal and then there's the other side that's the monarch and um i think that's what we've got it's almost a split personality was his mother that certainly other kings probably have been that but um, divine right is that the thing uh, we're having here so that was uh, King Charles the reason he was able to give that kind of a message uh, and having this old turmoil in his own family is because of that separation he has about him the deity as a monarch almost and the normal man that he is now uh, almost the same thing with Trump except that we know Okay, so Trump's out there selling these Bibles. And they've got included in them. We're going to get six parts for Trump. And they've got included in them the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Um, I think some other, uh, how many do I have? One, two, three, four. Some other um, interesting American documents. And um, is there any conflict with Trump um, selling, um, trading on, this kind of emotion. Uh, signifier card. Queen of coins. No, it's all about the money. And you see that he's not the king of coins, but he's the queen of coins. And so, no, it's just about the money. The challenge to that, though, is... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And this is very good because the world card is telling us about beginnings and endings. And these are major beginnings and endings. Okay, this is something that's come to an end and something new is beginning to take place. It's like a whole new life cycle completely. And so the challenge to hoarding all that money is that this is a whole new ball game. The basis of everything is this Knight of Swords. Okay, again, 
uh, truth, justice, rules, and law. The knight is the fighter for the royal court. And um, the basis of all of this situation that Trump is in the, the, is the truth, the justice, the rules, the law that is coming down. This is uh, the knight, as you can see, is a stronger card than the queen. So the king of justice, the, the justice system in the United States is ruling this day. In the past, or this cycle anyway, in the past of this for Trump and selling these Bibles is the queen of swords. Okay, this is in the past. So he had gone from <sighs> as strong as this queen is in gathering value, this queen is wielding the, what her, her truth, her justice, her rules, and her law, but that is in the past. So it's any any righteousness that he had in his feelings for what he's doing is set aside now. The thing now is money. He knows that he's being held to the fire and he needs to have the money to either get reelected, to pay his fines, stay out of jail, all of that. In the sky of this then is the Eight of Cups. So the sky is just like with uh, King Charles is all this emotional stuff has to be set behind him. And for him, these emotional things, this is not family and friends and and love and like you and I have no this is his empire but all that has to be set beside him, behind him and then the final outcome and look the secrets again right here ready hiding himself from the truth of those secrets and then the final outcome for Trump selling these Bibles is uh, the oh and the cards repeating the, the thing that's gonna happen here the Empress again reveals secrets and there's a nurturing aspect to her so she is going to you know bathe us in the knowledge of what those secrets are in reality in truth and and there will be a nurturing effect to that if not for trump then certainly for all of those who've been swept in by this grift i guess so that's what i've got for king charles iii and donald trump imagine those two on the same billing hey i'm going to show you the cards now hang on a minute okay so these are again some amazing cards the touchstone Tarot by Cat Black, who's an Australian artist. She lives in on the western, uh, southwestern, I think, part of Australia. But the box is so great, you really feel like you got something worthwhile in that. The instruction booklet is um, is very good, as a matter of fact. It's not in color, but it's got some really good uh, ideas for divination. Tells you a little bit about the artist, so that's handy. And then the cards. I mean, look how beautiful they are. Even just the back is gilding. You can feel that gilding right there. But the front. These cards are not hard to decipher, but they really focus in on the face. Of you'll notice all of these are you know from the bust up, from the waist almost up. So they really make you identify with the face when you're trying to make the interpretation. Cat Black is amazing. Um, I don't know how uh, she came up with this, but she came up with some beautiful, beautiful artwork and all digital so there's not a painting somewhere that looks like this of course these are made from actual uh, paintings and you know I, I do this so that everybody can look at these cards and maybe you don't get to see uh, kind of different kind of cards and, um, and this gives you that opportunity I always wanted to see what the tarot readers were using what the cards looked like when I was uh, only just uh, being a viewer 